What's up you guys? Welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, we're going to be installing an amplifier and a subwoofer to my 2018 Toyota Tacoma on my stock radio. So if you guys want to do this same install, this is going to be the video for you. I'm going to be using the Kicker Comp C for this install. The box that it did come with, it does not fit in the third gen Tacomas, so make sure on that. The subwoofer itself, it is a good subwoofer, but like I said, the box for this specific vehicle does not fit. So that's why I ended up purchasing this box on this side, and I'll show you why that one fits later in the video. I'm also going to be using the Planet Audio Amplifier. This, honestly, I do not really recommend running it with this subwoofer. I just purchased this amplifier, one, because it was a kit with this subwoofer, and two, it was cheap and I wanted to make this video for you guys. I'm also going to be in installing a line output converter. This one is honestly pretty cool. You guys want to stay tuned for this because this one's just a plug and play. If you guys are familiar with sound systems and doing it on a stock radio, you guys know you just have to do some cutting, splicing, and stuff like that. So if you guys are a little bit afraid on doing that, this line output converter that I do have today, it's going to be for a plug and play. So let's go ahead and get into the video and I'll show you how it's done. Before that though, this video may be long. The reason why is because I want to go in detail. So let's do it. So the first thing you want to go ahead and do before you even touch any wiring or uninstall or install anything is you want to go ahead and remove the negative of your battery. That's going to be the black side. The red one is going to be your positive side. There's going to be a 10 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove it. Just like that. Nice and easy. Let's go ahead and get into the next step. We're going to go ahead and now remove all the plastics necessary to be able to run the wire to the back where we're going to put the amplifier and the subwoofer. So for right here, it's easy to remove these. They're just held in with clips just like that nice and easy once you remove that step there on these tacomas they do have a little kick panel here in the back over here i know on camera you're not going to be able to uh, capture it but there is like a little lock nut that you just literally screw off and then it comes off once you do so you can then just literally just pop this off nice and easy nothing too hard just like that all right so now moving to the back seats we're going to go ahead and also remove this Nice and easy, it's just held in with clips, just like the front. So to make your life a lot easier, we're gonna go ahead and also remove this panel that's there. Remove this cover that's here. Once you've popped it off, right underneath, it's gonna be a 14 millimeter socket. Go ahead and remove that, and it removes the seatbelt. And then I'll show you what's next. So now that I removed the seatbelt, we're gonna go ahead and remove this whole panel here. So to do so, I usually just kind of start on the top, just kind of work my way around. It's just held in with clips. We're going to go ahead and remove the back seats really quick. It's super easy to do, nothing too hard. Looking back here, there's a bolt there, there's a bolt in there, and there's two more on the other side. Those four there are going to be 14 millimeter sockets, so you want to go ahead and remove those. It's so easy to remove these, check it out. Other side, same way. Once you've done so, you want to go ahead and put down the seat, put down this seat. Up next, now we're going to go ahead and remove these backings here. So you're going to notice in person, there's a couple of these, you want to go ahead and remove them. There's four of them. Just like that, just like that, just like that. Nice and easy, nothing too hard. Now you want to go ahead and get your 14 millimeter socket once again. And we're going to remove, there's four bolts all along here. One, two, and the fourth one. Once you've removed all four bolts, the seats come off just like that. Nice and easy, nothing too hard. Same with this one. So to remove this backing, uh, the one that has the two seats, uh, you're gonna notice the seatbelt is uh, locked in over here in the back. There's gonna be a bolt there. It's just a 14 millimeter socket to remove it. Just like that. So I know this seems like a lot of steps, but it's seriously no joke, super easy. Anybody can do it. Uh, the next step is you want to go ahead and get a 10 millimeter socket and you want to go ahead and remove one, two, three. One, two, three. So a total of six bolts. We're going to go ahead and now remove this backing. Like I said, if you did get a box that fits it, you'll be fine because all you have to do is cut a hole right here on the side to be able to run the wires through. As for me, my box does not fit. Uh, so I have to go ahead and remove, I'm going to remove this side so I can go ahead and mount my amplifier there as well. So let's go ahead and do this. So you want to apply even pressure, just that way the clips do not break. Just like that, just like that. Once you remove the clips, it comes off nice and easy. 
It's literally nothing hard. Like I said, anybody can do this. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this cover from this cover. We're gonna go ahead and start from the top. There's a little tab. You wanna go ahead and kind of bring it up. Once you've brought it over, I'll be honest, this part's a little scary. Just like that, and this whole tab releases. It is held in with a bunch of clips here into this side. So now that we've removed the plastics where we're gonna be running all our wire through, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just get started with the amp kit. So we're gonna first grab this one. This orange one is usually red, which is the one that goes to your battery. That's gonna be your 12 volt source to power up the amplifier. This one here is usually brown, and that's your ground wire. This little tiny blue one here, that one's gonna be your remote wire. This one here is gonna be your RCA cables. And this is going to be your speaker cable. So for us, our subwoofer. If you do have a clothes hanger like this, uh, this is going to be super handy and I'll show you why in a minute. So up next, you want to get your power cable and get your clothes hanger and you want to go ahead and open it up in a straight line like this. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to grab one side and you're going to go ahead and just uh, tape it onto the clothes hanger and we're going to feed it through the firewall. Straight. All right, tell me when you see it. It's through. Do you see a metal clothes hanger? All right, once you have the clothes hanger through and the wire through, now you just wanna go ahead and feed it in. Now that you fed the wire through, I just ran the wire like that all the way to the back, just like that. And just in case you guys are wondering how I pulled these plastic tabs up, I just got a flathead screwdriver, put it in there and pried it open. So then I ran it through just like this. I kind of pulled the carpet back just to put the wiring through. Up next, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get your provided fuse box that comes in the amplifier kit. I'm gonna go ahead and use two of these open tabs just like that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these uh, closed end tabs. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cutting into this wire so we can uh, just install this fuse around this section here. Get your wire strippers. Basically, you're gonna get your wiring to look like this. Uh, the circled one is gonna be connected to the positive of the battery. You do not wanna do that until you install everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that hanging. And this side over here, as you can tell, it's the open tab. That one's gonna go into your fuse box. <laughs> what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go ahead and start working with the fuse box. So we're gonna go ahead and open it and just slide them in. You wanna get a 14 millimeter socket and just uh, tighten that down. Don't over tighten it too much because you could break it. And then you want to do the same for the opposite side. Close it up. Just like that. I'm just going to use a double sided tape and maybe stick it around here. And then of course, like I said, this goes to the positive of the battery. We won't be doing that just yet. So now basically we're going to go inside the cab. We just finished wiring up, of course, uh, the 12 volt source for the amplifier. We're going to be working now on our line output converter. There are many out there, but this is the one that I chose because it's just a plug and play. Most of them you have to splice into wires, like say, for example, your rear speakers or just uh, it's it's a lot longer process so i ended up opting for this one so for this install right now we're going to need our line output converter we're going to need our rca cables that come provided in the amplifier kit so going to need our remote wire which comes also provided with our amplifier kit we're going to need to remove this dash you want to get your plastic removal tool you want to get it in there and kind of pop the whole fascia off it's just held in with clips all around, nice and even so you don't break nothing. Ow. So up next, now that we removed the fascia, you're gonna notice there's one, two, three, and four bolts. Those are all gonna be a size 10 millimeter socket. If you do have an extension for your wrench, it's gonna make it a lot easier. So now that you removed the four bolts, you're gonna go ahead and slowly bring the radio out. So now that you're looking at over here in the back, you're gonna notice on this side, there's a couple pink, uh, I think that's pink or purple wires, a green one and a gray one. That one you wanna go ahead and just disconnect it. Once you've disconnected it, you're gonna now get your new line output converter and connect it in there. Once you connect the one for the radio, now you wanna go ahead and connect this one onto the line output converter just like that once it clicks so now you have this little compartment here so basically you just inserted this in the middle between the radio and the stock wire harness so now that you connected the compartment here the line output converter uh, you're going to go ahead and get your rca cables that did come provided uh, the red one we're going to put it with the red the blue one we're going to connect it into the white slot 
just like that. That's pretty much your left and your right. All right, so now for the other side of the RCA cables, we're just gonna go ahead and feed it through. In person, you'll be able to see where you can uh, feed this all the way through, because in the end, this is gonna go all the way to the back where your amplifier is gonna be. So it's nothing too hard. And if you're having trouble feeding it through, you can always get your clothes hanger and feed it through that way. So now that we connected the RCA cables and we fed it through the bottom all the way to the other side, uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab this one that's connected to the line output converter. So this one is your remote wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and insert our remote wire that came with the amplifier kit. So let's go ahead and throw it in there. Of course, after we've spliced it open like that, let's go ahead and throw it in. And then we'll go ahead and crimp this down. Once you've crimped it down, you wanna go ahead and give it a little tug, not too hard, just a little tug. Make sure it's not gonna fall off. So now we're done with the radio part. Uh, we could go ahead now and just, of course, now feed this remote wire through the bottom as well, like we did with the RCA cables. Once we do so, we can put the radio back. Just don't screw everything back in yet because you do wanna test out the amplifier, make sure it works, or make sure you did this correctly. Always test before you screw it back in. Nice. So basically, I almost forgot, if your amplifier does have a subwoofer level, a uh, little remote just like this, uh, you want to, of course, uh, install this and run the wiring to the back where you're going to put your amplifier at. So as for me, I'm probably going to mount it right here next to my CB radio. As you could tell, uh, there is tabs to put screws through. I don't want to screw nothing in right there. So what I'm going to be using is just double-sided tape. And then uh, that way, if I ever want to remove it, I can, and there's no holes there. All right, so you wanna go ahead and connect it. Like I said, mount it where you're gonna want it. I'm gonna mount mine right here next to my CB. Just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run the wiring. All right, so now that I ran the wire through, as you could tell, I've put it in there and I put the clips back down, just like that. Ran it through all the way to the back, just like that. And right now we're in this step here. Let's go ahead and wire it up. So when picking your box for this specific truck, uh, you want to make sure that it's going to fit. So make sure to read forums, make sure to just check everything out before you purchase. So like I said on mine, it came as a kit so I didn't mind it. But if you could tell, this box is a little bit too wide and it does not fit on my 2018 Toyota Tacoma. As you could tell on this one, it does have a cutout. And the reason why is you'll see it in a minute. But you need this cutout, at least I know for sure, on the third gen Tacomas. So what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove this subwoofer and transfer it over. Go. All right, there it is. And if you could tell, this has a bunch of foam inside of it. I'm going to go ahead and grab this foam and throw it into my new box. Uh, you could purchase this, I believe, through the company where I bought this uh, new subwoofer box. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse this padding here. So the wiring that's here, it did come inside the box, but it did not come connected. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it. As you can tell over here, there's the red, which is positive, and there's the black, which is the negative. So on the wiring here, I'm going to use the one with the red stripe on it as my positive, which goes to the red. And then the clear one is going to go to the black. So let's go ahead and connect that right now. Of course, like I said, I'm going to reuse this acoustic uh, sound deadening. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Now that the padding is inside, like I said, if you do not have this padding, you're fine. It's not a big deal. But I've heard it helps with the sound and vibrations and stuff like that. Not 100% sure what it does, but I've heard that it's good. So if someone out there knows what this exactly does, please let me know in the comment section below. Of course, now that we connected the wiring to the actual box, we're going to go ahead and now get our subwoofer that we're going to be installing. Like I said, this is the kicker the kicker comp C. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. As you can tell, one side is black and one side is red. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the wiring accordingly to the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this wiring up a little bit. All right, there we go. So if you remember, I said the, right, the red stripe is gonna be my positive. Go ahead and connect that. And if you remember, I said the clear one is going to be my black, which is the negative. So now that our subwoofer is connected, just make sure to drop it in in the correct position. That way it's not upside down or anything like that. Nice and straight. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the screws in and this box should be ready to go and get installed. All right, so now that we got the subwoofer ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and install this now in the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you guys why we removed the storage panels in the back of the truck. 
So the reason why is the specific subwoofer box that I did purchase, we have to remove this specific storage panel. The cool thing about the one that I did get is it allows you to still utilize your bigger storage panel. There are subwoofer boxes out there, just letting you guys know that you guys could purchase that fit inside of here, but those are a little bit more on the expensive side. The subwoofer box that I did purchase today, which is in the description box below, I only spent around 90 or 100 bucks. Focusing on this bigger storage panel, we're gonna have to cut out a small hole right here on the side. The reason why is because our amplifier is gonna go on this side, and so that way we can run the wires through the storage panel. So like I said, we're gonna have to cut out a small hole on the side of the left side. You guys are probably gonna notice, I do have a wood pallet back here in back of the amplifier. So what I did here was I basically just cut out a template to fit the size of the amplifier. And you guys do want to do this because if you guys are mounting an amplifier directly to plastic, it could melt it um, because amplifiers do get really hot. So just letting you guys know, you don't have to, it's up to you guys. I already measured out where I'm going to be cutting the hole. It's going to be around here. Go ahead and reinstall the storage panel back. I already pre-cut my hole that I need. And also, I know you guys can't see it right now, but in back, I did put sound deadening material. If you guys missed that video, it will be in the description box below. So now that we have all the wiring right here in the back of the truck, we're gonna go ahead and get the remote wire, get the bass control knob if you have one, connection that's connected to the battery, the RCA cables. So we're gonna go ahead and put them through this storage panel where we cut out the hole. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to install the amplifier to the storage box. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and face it this way. So if your amplifier does come, of course, with a bass control knob, which mine does, go ahead and connect that. That's what this is right here. It looks like a regular house phone connection. Connect my RCA cables that come from the stereo. Make sure to uh, connect the correct one to the correct one. My blue one is my left side, and my orange reddish one is my red side, which is left and right. Once that's done, let's go ahead and flip it over now. Looking at this side, if you guys have a one channel, two channel, four channel, doesn't matter what it is, it's gonna be a little bit different on the speaker side, but it's all basically the same steps to install. So as far as for me, I only have one connection here. So this wiring here, which does come provided in the amplifier kit that I did pick up or any amp kit that you will purchase, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it now to the positive and the negative of the subwoofer side, which says speaker. So for me, I'm gonna be using I'm gonna be using the blue one as my negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that right now. I'm gonna be using my orange with the red stripe as my positive. And you wanna make sure to remember this so you don't mess nothing up or short anything out. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the remote battery wire, which is this little blue one that does also come provided in the amplifier kit. And also these little uh, pins here, they do come provided, they're easy to put on. You splice out the actual blue wiring and then you put this over, crimp it down and it does come with covering for the actual connection. Let's go ahead and connect the remote wire now. Go ahead and connect the actual 12 volt source which is here. As far as this blue wiring here, the stick one, this is going to be our, our ground wiring. It usually comes brown or black but for my amplifier kit it did come blue. So of course I know that's my uh, ground wiring. So let's go ahead and connect that. Same thing, you're gonna have your connection, this rubber boot and connect it to the ground. So I've now mounted the amplifier. It's nice and clean. As you can tell, you could barely see the wiring and I still have my storage compartment available if I wanna put stuff in there. On this side, the access wire that I did have, I just zip tied it and I'm gonna go ahead and push it back here. So now it's not exposed. Wire up the subwoofer and put the grounding wire onto the vehicle. So to ground an amplifier, you wanna go ahead and make sure you have a good ground. That way nothing happens, nothing goes wrong. So you can either just drill into the frame of your vehicle, that's usually a good grounding point, or if you have any screws that you can remove and reinstall, that's also a grounding point usually. So what I'm gonna be using is, if you guys remember, now I can't put back this panel anyway. So one of the screws that we did take off was right here. So all I did was sand it down so you can see now it's nice and shiny. And then I sand it down where I'm going to be mounting the actual round. It's going to be right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Before you put the bolt and actually screw it into the frame of the vehicle, you want to go ahead and make sure if there is paint on the actual vehicle, you want to go ahead and scrape it. So just get some sandpaper, stuff like that. Just like I did here. That's why it's shiny. That way it gets a good grounding point. So here's the screw. I did the same on this side. 
I kind of just sand it off, made sure it's a good grounding point. So let's go ahead and now install this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right under so you can't really see it. Let's go ahead and uh, put it there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my subwoofer. So as you can tell, the wiring's a little too long for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this a little bit and then we'll go ahead and connect the negative and the positive. This is the speaker come uh, the speaker cable coming out of the amplifier. If you guys remember, I told you guys remember which one's positive and which one's negative. So the blue one for me is going to be the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the black one of the subwoofer box cuz that's my negative. This orange reddish one with the line across it is going to be my red, which is positive, just like that. All right, nice and secure. So now, of course, let's go ahead and slide it back. Before I do so though, I wanna go ahead and show you. So if you guys remember, I told you, for this specific vehicle, you need a cutout just like this. And the reason why is if you could tell right here, there's a backing that's pushed out. So this slot here pretty much slides into it. So if you do not have this cutout, it's not gonna let you slide the box in. Now that we have the subwoofer in place, of course I already mounted the amplifier, you can't see no wiring or nothing. Now we're going to go ahead and put the rear seats back and then of course the bottom seats and then we'll test it out and stay tuned because I do have something to say at the end of this video. Now that we mounted everything, we're going to go ahead and connect the positive that's coming from the amplifier into the positive of the battery. So I have it now screwed in, we're all good to go. I've tested it out, it works, so now we're going to go ahead and close the hood and put everything back together in the interior. Let's get to it. I'm just going to go ahead and put the plastics all back together, make sure it looks nice and clean. I will show you in the end how it looks, so that way you can see how clean it came out. Well. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and put this panel back together, just where it was, the way we took it out. Panel back on, nice and easy, nothing. Just like that. Alright. All right, you guys, now that we finished the installation, we put everything back together. Let me go ahead and put down the seats. That way you guys see just how it looks. Like I said, I'm pretty satisfied, but I will end up uh, changing out my actual amplifier because that one I'm not too satisfied with. So as you can tell, I could still util utilize the bigger storage compartment. I could go ahead and put my uh, fire extinguisher back. I could put paper towels. I could put many other little things back here and I still have room. Let me go ahead and show you guys just how it looks now. I know you guys are dying to look in back of here. So let's go ahead and open it. So as you can tell, I mean, I can close my seats, fully functional. But of course, here's the subwoofer. It's nice and installed, no wires exposed. This is probably the only piece you will see, but I mean, you can't, you shouldn't really even open this. I mean, you can't utilize it anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it now, test it out. All right, you guys, so I know someone's probably gonna ask me, how do I tune my amplifier? In today's video, it was just covering the installation process. It wasn't really a review video. It wasn't how to tune an amplifier. It was just on the basics on how to install an amplifier to this specific vehicle with a stock head unit. So like I said, everything was pretty much plug and play. It looks nice and clean. It sounds pretty fairly decently good. I don't wanna play anything. I know a lot of people have told me there is uh, no copyright music that I can play, but I don't want to risk it, to be honest with you, and get a copyright strike. Um, it sounds a little bit better than, I guess, I could say the JBL uh, upgraded speakers, but once I switch out that amplifier, I know it's going to be a big change. So everything that you see here is going to be in the description box below. If you do want to go ahead and purchase it, enjoy it, and uh, yeah, see you guys next time. And don't forget, if you guys want your guys' truck to be featured on either the Syndicate page or on my actual community, YouTube's community uh, post, make sure to go ahead and email me. See you guys next time. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.